Hey guys, it's Missy Lynn. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, thank you for stopping by. And if you just so happen to watch more videos of mine and decide that you want to join the Missy Lynn family, all you have to do is mash on that subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell, that way you never miss another upload. Before I begin, I do want to say that if you are anti-surgery, so against surgery, then this video is not for you. I don't even want to bicker about it. My mind is already made up. I am 30 years old and I know what I want to do. I know what I've been wanting to do. So I don't need to read any comments about you should love yourself or you're doing this, you're doing that because I already know the risk and I love myself. Nothing that I'm choosing to do takes away from the self-love that I have for myself. It is just self-enhancement to me. So again, if you are anti-surgery, then I would greatly appreciate it if you would exit this video. I really want this video to be geared towards the individuals who literally want to know the process, want to know the, the necessary steps, and hopefully this video can give those answers to those who are wondering. All of the relevant information pertaining to my BBL will be listed down in the description box. That way you guys can reference back if you need to later on. Also, if you wanna see the behind the scene videos of my BBL journey, be sure to check out my vlog channel. I will put a link down in the description box below and you can go watch the behind the scenes. So I literally have some bullet points here on my phone because there are certain things that I do want to touch on that I feel was very important for me to get to where I am right now. And I feel like these points could actually help some of you guys if you guys are interested. So let's hop into it. Ever since I was younger, and I mean younger, like middle school, I remember being really, really tiny. Literally, I was a double zero. I would find myself like looking in the mirror and saying, dang, I'm super small. And I would tell my mom, I'm super small. Like, I wish I could gain weight. Like, I was literally in middle school, running track, trying to take creatine and all that to really just put some weight on. I was drinking Ensure and all kind of stuff, trying to gain weight, and I just was not gaining weight. I wore a double zero, and then finally I progressed into a zero by the time I was in high school, and I stayed a zero up until literally, I wanna say like 24, 25. When my metabolism started slowing down is when I noticed like, okay, I'm progressing into like a size one, a size two. But that's literally where it stopped. And I was still really, really, really straight. I felt like a little boy, no hips, no nothing. Ran track, so I was athletic in the gym. I did eight years active duty in the military. Literally tried everything to gain curves. And I just had to realize that the, um, the structure of my body is not meant for me to have curves. The bone structure will determine if you are going to have hips and curves and things like that. Now you can go in the gym and you can bulk up and you can gain muscle to give the illusion of the curves and this and this and that, but I don't know, like it's just, it, it just hits a little different to me. Like bulky curves versus like soft, gentle curves. I don't know, it just hits a little different. I need something that's going to jiggle, 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 jiggle. <laughs> like for me, 18, 19, even though I knew that I wanted to change these things about my body, I felt like I was too young. And I felt like I needed to kind of go, go through the changes because of course, as a woman and you start to grow, your body's going to change. So I was like, you know what? I am going to wait. I'm gonna wait because maybe, just maybe, you know, after my metabolism slow down, then I'll be able to actually fluff up. Yeah, the only thing that's fluffing up on me is the tummy. Make yourself happy. Do your research. I literally spend so much time researching. I've been researching BBLs since before I can remember. I was like in middle school. Even though I have my appointment already booked, even though my deposit is already down, even though I know what doctor I'm going with and I'm comfortable, I still do my research. Every night I'm on the internet looking up 
uh, any news kind of dealing with the BBLs. I'm in my surgery group. I'm literally hashtagging things. I'm looking at other surgeons' uh, profiles and seeing what people are saying as far as their complications and stuff underneath certain posts on Instagram. I'm monitoring the reviews underneath the surgery center's profile. Like Yelp, if you Google it, it's like four and a half, five star, or whatever. I'm looking at reviews. I'm Googling the um, the doctors there to see what their patients are talking about. I'm looking to see how people are being treated thus far. I'm looking at the comments underneath my surgery centers page. I'm looking at the comments underneath the surgeons all of the surgeons, I'm looking at their comments. I'm looking at the sister locations comments as well as their surgeons. Listen, I spent a lot of time just researching and, and reading, reading and just being aware. So definitely educate yourself, definitely communicate. You can join different surgery groups if you know that you are really, really, really interested in truly about to get a BBL. A lot of times you can just go on Facebook, type in the surgery sensors um, uh, name and then different pages will pop up if there are any uh, groups that have been created. You probably will have to answer some questions, give like a surgery date. Some groups will allow you to join even if you don't have a current date um, already in place. Some groups will allow you to join even if you don't have um, a surgery date scheduled and then other groups will want you to tell them your surgery date and the doctor that you're actually going to be seen. Join these surgery groups. I feel like they are very, very helpful. If you feel like you don't want to really like chime in right away, you can definitely message one of the um, admins of the group and ask any questions and let them know that you don't feel comfortable with posting just yet. You want to post anonymously, they can post for you. If you want to ask like everybody questions or you can just ask the admin questions they are very 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 helpful you can even go on instagram and you can find surgery pages of past patients um, who have had bbls so a lot of times women will create surgery pages to represent their surgeon but if you just type in sx just in the search bar on instagram you will probably see a whole bunch of surgery pages. And from there, a lot of them are private, but sometimes they aren't private. And then you can see like where those um, people went and just kind of get a feel for like other doctors. You can even go to like the surgery center's Instagram page and look in their comments. And a lot of times their past patients will be in the comments saying like, oh, he did a great job to my body or she did a great job to my body. Uh, and then you'll see like SX doll or something like that. So you can follow those pages to, to get real life experiences. I definitely feel like you should make a vision board and find some realistic wish pictures that you can literally lay out on a board. Somebody in my surgery group posted um, this page on Instagram that has like a whole bunch of booties. It's called like the Boom Boom Room or something like that. And you can like literally go and see all of these girls with different body types, different body shapes, um, big booties, small booties, gigantic booties. And me, I just spent some time you know, every day just kind of going through and finding photos, wish pics that were very similar to my body type. I literally saved all of the pictures to my phone, took it to CVS, printed it out, cut it out, put it on, glued it to a board, and that's what I'm taking to my doctor. I would never advise anybody to uh, get a wish pic that is not like your body because you are going to be disappointed if your surgeon cannot deliver. If you don't have the body type to start off with to have to get these results, then you showing a wish pic of a body totally opposite of yours, it's not going to be realistic. I definitely think that you should write down as many questions as possible that you feel is very important to you and spend that time during your pre-op and ask those questions to and ask, the, and ask your surgeon those questions. I think that is very important, you know? For me, the only question that I really have for my doctor is, okay, I've read online and I did a lot of research um, as far as getting BBLs before you decide to have kids. But I wanna know from my doctor's perspective if my body's going to shake back once I end up having kids. I read that it's actually better to have a BBL done 
lipo done before kids because then whenever you do get pregnant, that fat won't come back in those areas. And for me, I'm having my tummy lipo. I read that fat won't grow back there. Now, fat can grow back in other areas, but for me, I'm like, if I can keep my little flat tummy, I'ma keep my flat tummy. I'm across the bridge when I get there if I end up having loose skin and stuff like that. That's like one of my um, biggest questions, to be honest with you. Once you've made the decision to go through with your surgery and you've put your deposit down, start buying your supplies little by little. It can become very expensive and not only do you have to pay for the surgery, but you have to pay for the post-op care and you have to pay for all of the supplies that you're going to need for pre and post op care, you know what I'm saying? So if you're being proactive and you're buying a little bit at a time, it's not gonna feel like you're just splurging money because it does get pretty expensive. It gets really expensive and then on top of that, you have to keep in mind that you're going to have to like buy a stage two Faha, which can range anywhere between like 100 to $200. And then you're probably gonna have to buy a stage three Faha and you get your first Faha, which is the stage one, after surgery, like they put you in that. But soon after, like you're going to have to get a stage two for more compression. So that is something to like really factor in. And that is something that I factored in. I literally started ordering a little bit of products here and there. And then whenever my surgery date changed, I was like, okay, thank God that I had already started buying a little bit of things at a time. So now I don't really have much left on my list. So now I can just go ahead and order or go to Walmart and buy the rest of the things that I need. You can choose to get private nurses if you are going to stay in an Airbnb or like a hotel, which I think is the best way to go if you don't have uh, family members or loved ones to actually travel with you um, and take care of you and they need to be some strong individuals because I hear that it's really tough and you're going to need all of these support that you can get and you're going to need to have people around around you who can actually care for you and kind of wait on you hand and foot if you don't have anyone to do that then you can travel by yourself and you can choose to stay in a recovery house with um, nurses that are already there, but you're going to be at the recovery house with other women who had surgery just like you that day. I do know that you can choose to have a roommate at the recovery house and pay less, or you can have your own room at some recovery homes um, and pay a little bit more. Like I said, for me, the only way I would stay in a recovery house is if I didn't have people available to travel with me. Um, I did order a digital thermometer to have my temperature checked. And I also ordered um, an ox oximeter to have my oxygen level and blood level, um, blood pressure checked. So I have that on hand. If you did not see my BBL supply list, I will link it down in the description box below. Definitely check that out. I have some really good information on the BBL supplies that you should have before you leave for surgery. Being able to pay for the surgery. Now for me, I am really good at saving money, so I've had a savings for a very long time, so I'm able to take money out of my savings account to fund my surgery. Now, if you don't have um, spare any extra money, I would definitely say start saving now and plan for your surgery like a year out and really try to like save uh, money that way. I did see in the surgery group, um, a lot of women were talking about different ways to make uh, money, extra money on the side, aside from like their regular job. A lot of women are doing Uber Eats and uh, DoorDash. A lot of women are doing Uber. A lot of women are um, doing like little side jobs. One thing that I can recommend for you guys is to download the Digit app. Now, what the Digit app is, it's literally an online save, like a banking account. You literally just hook up your bank account to this app. It scrubs your bank account and it takes any loose change basically like think of it like that if you have any loose change just hanging around it'll take that and put it into that little online savings account for you it's never going to take out 
money that you do not have. It's never going to take out money if you have bills. It is FDIC approved, which means that if anything happens to your money, then they have to reimburse you. Like your money is insured. I kid you not, guys. Since April, I managed to save over $6,000. I set up a goal called quarantine back in April. And as you see right now, I have $1,790 in there. My petty cash, I have $16,033. Today, we ended up saving $138. So that $138 was divided into three. Two days ago, I ended up withdrawing um, $2,000 out of my uh, rainy day goal. And I'm already at $92.89 between yesterday and today so it saves for you literally every day all the money i'm normally spending on like coffee and uh starbucks and starbucks and things like that i'm no longer doing that i'm no longer i'm no longer getting my nails done um as frequently as i was literally 200 dollars a pop um so I'm able to save like a lot of money. At any time, you can withdraw the money that you're saving and send it back to your bank account with no fees, no nothing. And if you feel like, you know what, I don't want Digit to save um, any money for me right now, then you can literally just pause it. You can go to settings and then you can hit pause. You can even tell them how much you want them to save for you daily. And you can even create a unique goal. Once you create that unique goal, you can add a description, which is surgery. You can add the title BBL. You can put the peach emoji. Then you can say how much you wanna save and when you wanna save it by. And literally all you have to do is sit back and let the Digit app save for you. It's helpful because if you are not disciplined and you are saving money in your savings account that's connected to like your checking account or like your bank or whatever, but you steadily transferring, transferring from your savings to your checking account and you're spending the money that you're trying to save, you are not saving, it's no point. Move the app to any part of your phone where like you're not gonna pay attention to it and just let it do its thing. So that's literally one way that you can save money without even having to worry about really saving money, right? So you can save money and let the Digit app just kind of scrub your account and then you can follow the tips of the other girls and get like a little side job, go do DoorDash, babysit if you have to babysit, um, purge your closet, sell things on Poshmark or, or Depop, you know, make some money, some extra money from things that you're not actually using. And you can just keep putting that money away, putting that money away. You can cut back eating fast food all the time. You can maybe give up doing your nails twice a month and do once a month or don't do pedicures twice a month. Every two weeks, you can do it once a month, things like that, like any way that you can kind of like recoup some money, you can do that and put it away. Another way that you can pay for it, I've seen a lot of women talk about it in the surgery group, is uh, applying for care credit, and it's basically a line of credit that you can use for surgery. They will run your credit and they will give you a certain amount based on your credit, but you can use um, some of that credit to pay for your surgery and then you can pay um, out of pocket for the rest or you can kind of finance the whole surgery. I'm gonna be paying cash for mine, but it's it's very popular. And I see a lot of women talking about it in the surgery group, like they're paying um, for it, you know, monthly. So to each his own, but I just wanted to give you guys some options if you wanna save money and be able to get a BBL. So when I realized that I wanted to get a BBL, I, but I narrowed down the doctor and the surgery center that I wanted to go to, so the surgeon and the surgery center. Then from there, I went to their website, I applied for an online consultation, um, they sent me an email, and then I took photos following their instructions and then I sent my photos into them. They then turned around and they emailed me and told me that I was a great candidate and that um, we could move on to actually scheduling and putting down a deposit. So then someone called me, we went over dates, we went over prices, I put a deposit down for the doctor that I wanted, and then I received a welcome packet email that literally had everything that I needed to know 
um, for my surgery. So typically 60 days before your surgery date, you're going to receive an email that has your medical clearance paperwork and your lab paperwork that you're supposed to take to um, your PCP or like a doctor that can actually clear you. For me, being that my surgery date changed, I literally got my paperwork like around the 30 day mark and I had to turn it in two weeks before my surgery date. When typically, if you get your paperwork at the 60 day mark, you have 30 days up until the 30 day mark to get your paperwork to the surgery sensor or else your surgery will be canceled. The reasoning behind that is because whenever you go to get your labs done, you need to be within a certain range because your labs are only good for a certain amount of time before you need to be retested. So that's like really important um, to have your labs done within that certain period of time because things can change, your body can change, and that can be a major risk factor and that can cause complications or even cause you to die. So at the 60 day mark, they're going to send you the, the medical paperwork and the clearance. You have 30 days to get in with your doctor, get your labs drawn, and then you have to have that paperwork to them by the 30 day mark. So then once we got past the medical clearance and things like that and got approved, they send you an email and they tell you um, basically you're supposed to stop taking X, Y, and Z medication. And then they're going to give you a call and an email at your two week mark to ensure that you have stopped taking certain medications, ask you if you have any questions. And then that's pretty much it. And then you wait until you are called for your pre-op time. You're going to need to be in your area. I say two days before surgery. So you're gonna have your pre-op the day before surgery. And I feel like to avoid any type of hassle, try to get there the day before your pre-op date. So for me, my surgery is on a Tuesday. Um, pre-op is on a Monday. I'm getting there on the Sunday. Up until the time that I put a deposit down, I made sure to really educate myself. Um, I joined surgery groups. I follow surgery dolls. I joined my surgery center's Facebook group. Like the women who actually had procedures done, they started surgery groups uh, based on the doctor and then they have surgery groups just based on the actual surgery center. So I made sure to join all of them to where even though I put a deposit down, if I felt like I I seen better results with other doctors. I just really wanted to like weigh my options. I am going to be staying in an Airbnb about 10 minutes away from the surgery center. I just didn't feel comfortable staying in a recovery house. I wanted to be able to heal in the comfort of my own little space. So um, I do have my loved ones coming with me and they are going to be taking care of me. So for travel, we're actually driving to Austin and on the way back, just so I don't have to be in a vehicle for three and a half to four hours, my sister and I, we are going to fly back. Um, it's only a 45 minute flight. So I feel like that's gonna be more comfortable for me. I can actually stand up and not have to sit down or be in pain. I know that you can actually get a flight um, type of like memorandum from the surgery sensor that basically says, hey, this patient just had surgery. Make sure that she gets on the flight first and off the flight first, you know? So yeah, that's something that I've been kind of proactive about, making sure that I have everything set up. I have the plane tickets already booked, the Airbnb already booked. Um, I have like my menus kind of planned out as far as like what I want to eat to make it easier on my loved ones uh, who's taking care of me to like actually cook things for me and make sure that I'm eating, that way I can take my medication. So I feel like, you know, this whole journey, the whole process has been really easy and very streamlined because I've been proactively planning. I, I plan, plan, plan to where everything is just kind of falling into place. All right, guys, so that is everything that I needed to share with you guys about how I came to the decision and the necessary steps that I took to actually get my BBL appointment. Don't forget to check out all of the other BBL videos here on my channel. Um, I have some really good information. Also, if you wanna see the behind the scene videos of my BBL journey, be sure to check out my vlog channel. I will put a link down in the description box below and you can go watch the behind the scenes. So until next time, beauties, be you, be beautiful, and I'll see you guys later.